Hey, team, Taki here, hope you're doing great. Uh, just finished up a weekly SHRP, one of the calls we do with our clients uh, every single week, helping you get really clear about what, what actions to take over the next seven days. Great question came up, thought it'd be really helpful for you. And uh, so while I'm here at the computer in the fishbowl today, I thought I'd record a quickie, on, quickie for you about uh, how to shrink down session time and stop sessions from going over time. So a uh, great coach on the, on the session today asked me, I've got this client, I've got a call with him later today. He's got a tendency to wander. I don't know if you've ever had that. Uh, have you? Uh, where, you know, if the call goes for an hour, uh, you'll get an agenda, but then you'll do it and then it'll kind of wander off to somewhere else. And then with three minutes to go, you think you're done and they go, oh, well, we've got three more minutes. Let me just ask and they'll give you three more things and it escalates out of control. Have you ever had that? If you have, just type in a yep and that'll let me, to, let me know that A, this is useful for you and B, uh, that you can kind of see and hear me, which would be ideal as well, okay? So here's what happens. I think that most coaching sessions are uh, too long and full of fluff. And in my experience, oh, by the way, I want to give a hat tip to a couple of great people. Um, Marcus Bird wrote a great book called Three Minute Coach. And uh, some of this, uh, one of the six things I'm going to share with you today was inspired by him. But if you think about like an hour in a coaching session, usually there's like, you know, at some stage through the, through the call, there's like five minutes of magic. Yeah, five minutes of magic. And then the rest is just filler. It's just, it's conversation that just takes up, oops, conversation that just takes up time. And so what we want to do is we want to, we want to shave this off. So we end up with just the magic and as little filler as we can. So we can get clients clear and get them moving and then get them on with their day and you into your world as well. You with me so far? Is that, is that helpful? Cool. So thanks, Raz, got that. So here's what we want to do. Uh, I'm going to give you six things you can do right now to take control of your calls and to um, to really slim this up. So uh, let's let's do this right now. Uh, leave that page. Click that button. Oops. Uh, hang on a second. That's what I'm after right there, bam. Okay, so six things, are you ready? Uh, no particular order, these are just the, uh, the order that they came to me when I was working with my client today. Uh, I thought that might be helpful for you. So here's the first thing. Um, the first thing is framing. And uh, so let's just see if we can get six. Of course, knowing me, the moment I draw six boxes, we'll end up having seven, right? But that's just, you know, part of the course. So uh, six things we can do. By the way, uh, if you wanna trim down coaching session time uh, but do it in a way that increases their momentum. I think that's the goal. We don't want, we're not just doing this for us. We're doing it so that the clients get a better result as well. Um, so here's the first thing we, we uh, first thing to do is just kind of get clear about framing. Here's what I've learned. One drop of framing is just way easier. One drop of kind of pre-frame, a, a couple of words said right at the start of something means that I don't have to like, like once the call's lost control, the horse is bolted. It's harder to bring it back on track. We'll talk about how to if it does happen. But all we want to do is upfront frame time. And so if you're on a call uh, like a Zoom or a one-on-one uh, you know, -on -one or even a face-to-face, -face, the first thing you need to do is frame time. And so I would say something like, hey, um, who's on the line? Dave. Uh, really looking forward to our session today. As you know, we've got 30 minutes booked in and I've got somebody booked in straight after you. So why don't we do this? I'm going to set a little timer on my phone here for um, 27 minutes. It is, that'll, that way it'll just ping us at the 27 minute mark and we can wrap up, make sure we're really clear about insights and our next actions. Is that okay with you? Great. So like I said, I've got somebody straight after you. So let's just jump straight in right now. Not in a way that's designed to make them feel rushed, but just in a way to say, hey, we're here to do business. Let's get down to work. Is that cool? So a drop of framing up front makes everything else heaps easier. Uh, by the way, if you're following this, can you do me a favor? If there's someone you know who you think could use a little bit of help uh, being more efficient or uh, getting better results with their clients, just tag them in or hit the share button. I want as many people as we can to see uh, these trainings. So number one, frame it. Uh, up front, I think give them a, a time frame and explain that that's how we're going to roll. 
Number two is about your energy, and that's about uh, stand up. I don't know about you, but my energy is so much better when I'm standing. I do all of all of my webinars standing up. Uh, all of my, frankly, I do everything standing up. So right now I'm at a stand up desk or at a table. A stand up desk sitting on the top, some weird sort of coffee table thing with my laptop on it. My energy is a million times better. I read this book by a presidential speechwriter years ago and it said, if you have no energy, you have no audience. And as a coach, your main job, you're an energy transformer. Your job is to kind of take your energy uh, and move it into them. So take them from whatever level they're at and move them up a notch, right? And so I don't know about you, but when I'm sitting down, I don't tend to be at my most energetic. And so every call I, I make, every coaching session I do, I do standing up. Obviously, if we're at a coffee shop, maybe less so, but most of my stuff's done online. My energy is a million times higher and I'm less patient. Cool? So I think stand up is just a, a really, really easy fix. Stand up, your energy is going to be different. You're going to be less patient. You're going to have a bit more pep about you, a bit more pep in your voice. Okay? Number three. Hey, Keith. Good to have you here. Good people on the line today. Uh, thanks for all the, the loves and the uh, thumbs ups. I think we're doing good. Um, next thing. Uh, you ever seen those cop shows where they bring in a suspect for interrogation, they, they lock him in the room, and they work out just before the, the two cops walk in, it's always partners, you know, Tango and Catch and Turner and Hooch and whoever else. There's always good cop, bad cop. And so most of the coaches I know are pretty good cop. Like you're good people, you want to help. Some of them, maybe less so. But right, let's just say you're good cop. What we need is a bad cop. And I think the bad cop is the clock. The clock's the boss. So you don't have to be a, a dick. You don't have to be harsh at all. You just, you, like I did right at the start. What have I just done? I've now set up a third party outsider who's going to arbitrate time. Right? And so it's super easy. The clock's the boss. If you have a physical office with a receptionist, I know uh, one of our coaches does um, uh, you know, face-to-face sessions at his office. He's got a, a really nice office and clients come in and see him. That's you know, a little bit old-fashioned, but it, it still works. And... Uh, if it's, say, an hour session, at the 55-minute mark, there'll be a knock at the door, and Vanessa, his assistant, will say, hi, you know, Steve, uh, just letting you know, five minutes to go, and um, Tony, your 11 o'clock, is waiting in the foyer. And that just lets both of them know politely that the time is running down, a little bit like this three-minute alarm thing is going to do for me. Does that make sense? So make the clock, make the, clock the boss, then you are golden. What do you do if the conversation does go off track? Actually, let me give you one more kind of framing piece up front, which is going to really, really help. Clear agenda up front, ideally on the, what's the one thing? Or if you've got a little bit of time, what's the three things? So we use a, uh, a worksheet for all of our one-on-one sessions. It's called the 20. Let me find it in here. And so sometimes if I'm on a call with a client, I'll have this up on the screen and we'll check in and we'll get the, so by the way, one way to make your coaching sessions efficient is to follow a framework, right? Now we look at past, uh, but in a way that moves us forward, it's all about momentum. Uh, What are your wins and why do they matter? Then we look at the, the current situation, which is about getting people unstuck. And then we look at the, so let's make that yellow. And then we look at the future. What are the three things you want to get done, right? Now, having a set structure trains clients to follow the framework. When we get into the focus bit, great. So what are the, you know, what are the one or two or three most important things we can focus on today? And then what order would you put them in? Great. And then just tick them off as you go. Is that cool? So I think next up is... Is having an agenda... Uh, what's the one thing that you want or the, or the two things you want? I think if I had to kind of summarize that, I would say having a framework. By the way, if you want a copy of the 20, the framework that I just showed you, the one that we use to coach our clients, um, just comment the word, uh, the number 20, two zero. It's called the 20 because it's helped us take our coaching sessions down from an hour to 20 minutes and have clients just incredibly focused and uh, super, super pumped. So if you want a copy of that, just type in two zero twenty and I'll, uh, I'll hook you up, okay? Um, okay, so uh, have a framework. Next up, what do we do? 
Well, what do you do if a conversation starts to go off track? I learned this from a, a great coach years ago. His name's Roland, uh, Roland the Hanukkut. And uh, he had this really lovely language that allowed him to bring any conversation back on track whenever he wanted to. At the start, he set up this frame. He said, uh, in my coaching, I know that there's two kinds of conversations we can have. We can have conversations which are useful or conversations which are just interesting. Uh, I'm your coach. And so when we're coaching together, let's agree to only have conversations which are useful. Is that okay with you? And everyone says, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. So the moment they start wondering, talking about something else, you go, hey, that's really interesting. Uh, let's just pause right there. Uh, is, that, is that a useful topic for us to talk about or is it just interesting? And they go, no, no, you're, you're right. It's just interesting. Okay, great. Well, let's get back to what's useful. And that just having that really simple useful versus interesting framework is just a great way to bring people back on track. Another thing that I'll often ask when somebody gets into story, I'm like, that's great. So what's the actual question? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay, let me just pause you right there. That's really, that's really, I mean, you don't have to be rude about it. It's like, okay, that's really interesting. Uh, what's the actual question? Right? And that just forces them to ask you something that then you can reply to. By the way, my coaching is quite directive. I'm not... Uh, I don't believe that the client has all the answers all the time. Often you do. And so it's totally okay to lead the client when the client needs to be led. Good so far. I think the third piece, uh, sorry, third, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth piece, the last thing is going to be an absolute killer for you. And by the way, thanks guys. I saw this, uh, your notes there for the 20. If you want to copy, just type in two zero and I'll hook you up. Um, I think, I, I said this right at the start, that most coaching sessions uh, are full of fluff and filler. Like if that's the hour on the clock, there's probably like five minutes of magic. Yeah, I'll be generous. Maybe there's more, but let's call it five minutes of magic. And the rest of the time is just filler, right? And so what we want to do is we want to get rid of all the filler. And there used to be this, this product, I, I, guess, I guess they still sell it. Uh, used to be this product they'd sell on TV called space bags where you'd put all of your, your clothes or your laundry and your uh, dunas and stuff, blankets, into this plastic bag and then vacuum out all of the fluff, all of the filler, and it'll take something this big and shrink it down to that, just to its essence. That's what we want to do. We want to space bags your coaching sessions. So let me give you a, a model uh, that's a secret weapon for a bunch of our clients. Uh, again, Credit where credit's due. If you ever get an idea from someone else, you should credit that person. So this idea was inspired by a great client of, of ours called Marcus Bird. And uh, so if you take the, the framework I just showed you, the 20, you'll be able to do a great coaching session in 15, maybe 20 minutes. Let's call it 15, okay? So here's the frame. You tell your client uh, that, you know, in our next session, block aside an hour. We probably don't need the whole hour, but let's just block it out uh, in case. And that way, if we do finish up early, you're going to have time to, to implement. So then they get on the call and you go, great. Uh, you got the hour block out? Great. I don't think we're going to need the hour. Um, but it's good that you got it there just in case. So you do your magic. You follow the, the framework in the 20, the you know, 15 minute or 20 minute session. And at the end, we're, we're looking for two things. You know, I think as coaches, we deal in insights and actions, right? So we want them to pop an aha uh -huh and then have three specific action steps to follow. They want to, you need to know what to do with it. So by the time you're done in the 20, you've done uh, wins, so they feel really proud of what they've done. They've got unstuck in the future. They're really clear about what to do in the past. And in 15 minutes, they're done. Anything extra would be filler. And we're, remember, our job is to space bags out the fluff. And so we get them here and we say, great, so do you know what to do? And they'll say, yes. Can you do it? Uh-huh. Okay, great. So I know you blocked out the rest of the hour. Uh, so let's do this. Let's pause our conversation right here. Oops. Let's pause our conversation right now. I want you to take the next 45 minutes and get working on number one and two right now. Uh, you've already got the time blocked aside. Uh, get into it. And then at the top of the hour, what I'd love you to do, please, is to send me an update with what you got done. And they'll be like, fantastic, because for the first time ever, they'll leave a coaching call without homework, right? They'll actually get the stuff done. And at the end, they'll be able to send you a quick report about what they've done. They'll be super clear where the energy is most they can implement instead of having to leave with a big fat to-do list. Does that make sense? So there, these are six ways to shrink down your coaching session times 
to uh, help clients win faster and frankly, free up a ton of your time. So, uh, what I'd love to know right now is, uh, are they, has that been helpful for you? What's been most useful? Let's just do a quick check-in. I wanted to kind of give you this direct in one piece. If there's anything I can do for you right now to help you with your coaching, please type it in. I'd love to know. Uh, my job is to be as useful as I possibly can. So let's kind of check the comments and see if there's anything you need. Let's have a look. Hey guys, lots of uh, haze, lots of people asking for Hooch was bad cop. Yeah, it totally was. Thank you. All right, any questions you got for me? If you have, please type them in. Anything you want to know about uh, about shrinking down session time, about increasing client value or moving people forward. Remember, if you want uh, a copy of the 20, our system for running an, a really efficient momentum-based coaching call so clients move, just type in the, the number 20 and I'll hook you up like uh, Michael and Gary and a bunch of others have. Robert saw that. Any questions? Let me let me help. Interesting, but I want more useful. Yeah, the whole idea about interesting but useful. Love that. Perfect. Uh, by the way, I'm thinking about doing a uh, a brainstorm session uh, later this week. Just a 60 minute brainstorm on how to you know how to. You know, kind of sharing together what's best practice on running a leverage coaching business and how to coach, how to deliver great results for clients at scale. If that will be helpful for you, uh, I'm just thinking like an hour, a bunch of clients, maybe some of you guys on the line. I'll share some best practice for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then I'll just be able to kind of brainstorm with you. If that would be helpful, if you'd like to do that, uh, it's a complete experiment. Just type the word Zoom, Z-O-O-M. And we'll use Zoom, like GoToMeeting, it's called Zoom, uh, and run a brainstorm. I'd love to do that with you. I think it'd be super fun. Would you like that? Uh, Kevin says, what if they have a question you don't know the answer to? Great. And so this, this relates to the idea that uh, clients are begging to be led. Now, if, if a client has a question you don't know the answer to, then your, your goal is either to give them, you know, guide them to finding out the answer, like figuring out so where can we go to find that, or to go, like if you are supposed to be the answer man and you don't know, that's a really good question. You know, if I'm on a group call, I'll ask the group to chip in. But if there's something I legitimately don't know, I'll either say I don't know it or I'll go, hey, that's awesome. Let me dig in. I've got a couple ideas about where to research and I'll come back to you. And that's completely okay as well. How have I set up this live so we can see your iPad? Um, I'm on my Mac right now and I'm using a tool called Ecamm Live. It cost me 29 bucks the other day. I thought I'd give it a try. So far, it's good. I'd actually prefer to have a, a flip chart here, but this seems to work pretty, pretty nicely. Um, perfect. All right, Tim, well, this has been fun. Again, uh, if you want a copy of the worksheet, type 20, number 20. If you'd like to jump on a, a Zoom brainstorm session and just jam on ways to make coaching better, I'd love to do that. Type in Zoom and I'll, uh, I'll hook you up. Michael, you're totally welcome. I think that's uh, all I've got question marks, uh, questions wise. Um, I wonder if there's a way to, uh... sorry guys, I'm just looking over here because for some reason I've got a thing in the way. Ah, now I can see it. Perfect. Yep. Mario says it's been great. You're welcome. Thanks Vishnu. Thanks Bruce. Thanks Nick. Guys, it's been really fun. Appreciate you guys. Take good care. This has been Taki Moore. Out. I'll talk to you soon.